Okay, it is the weekend and uh, we're back from our little jaunt down to Cornwall because you know you do 24 hours down to Cornwall and uh, time to get the Fiat out. But first I've got to move the trusty Land Rover once again and um, well, probably place it on the garden to get it out of the way. But uh, it's alive again. It's back from the scrapyard. I do love the way this thing sounds. <laughs> Proper waffly waffly. A couple of weeks ago, Karim delivered the Fiat 850 back, and so she's now hiding here. Well, technically underneath, the BMW's just here, and you can see the lovely T5R is also just here, waiting a bit of attention, as is all the detritus that's come out of my other workshop. So, we're going to go and start the Fiat and take her out for the first proper run. Um, we're not going very far, which is good, um, but enough distance to get it properly warmed up and uh, put it through its paces a little bit. Right, let's get her out. So we have come up to a little classic car show just around the corner from us at a place called the Bug Barn, which uh, is home to lots of Volkswagens, but also they've got loads of really cool Americana. Look at this uh, Chevy Corvair here. And in a really interesting location, I'm actually quite surprised I haven't been disturbed trying to film because um, while you can see the power station here, what you can probably just make out in front of it is the little yellow approach lights for East Midlands Airport. We are literally right under the approach for EMA, uh, which is marginally disturbing when an aircraft comes into land. But the Fiat made it. Uh, it was lots of fun driving it for the first time properly in, well, quite a long time. Uh, and now we're going to go and look at some, well, some VWs and clearly some big fat Americana loveliness. You can't help but marvel at just the sheer size of these big old American Yank tanks. How cool is this Plymouth? What a thing. Well, it's neither Volkswagen nor American, but... Um... Well, it was a Land Rover, I think, at some point in its life. What on earth is that? So this thing's even more of Frankenstein than our Land Rover. So this is actually a Range Rover chassis with a three and a half V8, running through a Jaguar three-speed into a transfer case and then sort of Land Rover underpinnings from there. Um, but designed for doing high speed trialing. So capable in high of doing 100 plus miles an hour, which is terrifying. I wouldn't want to do a 100 in any Land Rover product, let alone something like this with barely got windows in it. But what a thing, it sounds lovely as well. How cool is that? Here we see the Instagrammer in her natural location, taking photos. Evidence you should always be a bit careful if you're trying to overtake a VW camper van because you never quite know what's going to be sitting in the back of it. Yep, that would be a Volkswagen Golf uh, VR6 engine powering a, a, a flat back camper. And just like that, we are home. The Fiat is ticking herself cool. Uh, all we do now is get her back in the garage, which could be a little bit of a mission uh, because we've got the gravel ramps and then we've got to get up onto the flat uh, because we haven't yet done the pavement outside to bring the levels up. But yeah, she's been absolutely flawless. Lovely little thing. And um, it's the first time I've really had a chance to open it up. And one of the things I was told by Karim, who did a lot of the work on it, is that don't be scared to rev it. So I would always drive it to about four and a half, maybe 5,000 and then change. 
because I thought it doesn't want to be revved very hard. And he said, no, 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 this is all wrong. All of the power is between five and 6,000. And he is not wrong. Uh, it really comes alive at about five and a half thousand. It sort of jumps around to just past 6,000 RPM, which is delightfully fun. Um, it does mean it sounds like you're really screaming it all over the place, but nah, it's a bit of fun. Uh, right, time to put Turin's little masterpiece away for a little while. So I know this is the, the bit you probably all want to see. So uh, let me show you the Fiat's little powerhouse. There she is, ticking cool, nice and clean. So we've got a nice original air cleaner here. It's got the four branch manifold rather than the sort of cast four into one, uh, which goes right the way down here to the little exhaust box, which is hiding under that cover there. You can see we've got a new fuel regulator, all new fuel hoses. Um, and then it's had all new pipes and stuff on here when it was rebuilt and the nicely rebuilt carburetor, which means it idles beautifully. And if we look closely, that is a nice clean fuel filter. So we're no longer getting rubbish coming through from the tank. Although it does look like there might be a little bit of seepage there. So maybe need to look into that. So a little bit of jeopardy with the Fiat. We very nearly had an engine fire. So the last little bit of video I recorded, I noticed it looked a bit damp down here. I uh, put the camera down. As soon as I touched this uh, bit of pipe here, it popped clean off the fuel filter, pouring fuel everywhere. So this is the line that comes out of the tank. So it feeds from the lifter there, down that pipe to the fuel filter. And it connects into the seal filter here. This did feel nice and tight. However, um, when I put it all back together, tightened it up again, the same thing happened a second time. And it turns out that there was a bit of gunk or something in the thread for this little Jubilee clip. And so when it felt tight, it wasn't actually fully tight on the little bit of plastic that goes in. So I gave it a really, really good turn and it broke through whatever was in the way and is now properly, properly tight. So that is not moving. Top tip for me, and yes, continuity area. I have got changed because I didn't want to get oil and petrol over my shirt. Um, always check your fuel lines. Always, always check your fuel lines. So I've been through and checked the rest of them and everything feels nice and tight. No perished lines because the lines are all nice and new. But what a very easy mistake to make. The Jubilee clip, I was convinced it was tight and then it popped off a second time. So got to make sure it is actually tight, which I have now done. Whew. So while we're busy doing updates, I thought I should give you a bit of an update on the Audi. So uh, we've had this car for a few months now. Um, we had to do a wheel bearing fitter recently, which was in a previous video. And since then, it's been sort of OK. Uh, we have had a recall, though. So it went in yesterday to Audi in Derby, who I can highly recommend. They were very, very nice, uh, especially to a customer with a car that's worth probably less than some of the wheels on the showroom floor. And they, free of charge, had the car in, so they replaced the passenger airbag. They also did the long overdue uh, emissions software update. Um, but the most important thing is they actually cleaned the car, something I've not yet actually properly done. And it, it looks all right, actually. It looks quite nice. So I might have to actually start regularly cleaning it because it does scrub up quite nicely. That said, I have come out this morning and a bird had pooed all the way down the side of it because clean car. Them's the rules, apparently. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.